Welcome back everyone, I'm Zell, and today it's time to look at the Best Tech Dolphin. Alright guys, the, this is model 1707 from Best Tech. And it's a, a titanium handled S35VN folding pocket knife and a really well done one. Let's get a close look here. We've got titanium handles with a uh, kind of a stonewashed appearance. We've got some milling up through here, mill lines, some mill lines out through here too. We also have an integrated... Uh, lanyard tube which i rather like we roll around the back side we have a titanium backspacer we got a little bit of jimping on that backspacer here and all the way back here and uh, we do have ourselves a milled in landing area or indexing area and we've got a flipper tab with just a little bit of jimping it's not aggressive it's not anything that's going to eat your fingers up you can play with this knife all day and it's not going to be a problem and as we roll it around to the top, got a little jumping across the top of the blade. Same thing with the jumping there. Fairly, I mean, it's gonna work, but it's not super aggressive. Now, rolling around to the back side, we have a tip up right hand only pocket clip that we'll talk more about here in a little bit. And we also have these pivots with the big collars around them. Now, these are free spinning pivots, as we saw in the disassembly video we did with the. Uh, or sell and also this area right here a US nickel fits quite well in it I'm sure that there's currency from other places in the world that will fit quite well in it also but uh, that's what I have available here so that's what I used and all in all internally and outside milling and everything I mean look at it guys the champers are great uh, whoever did the programming for the CNC and the proofing and everything did a great job and brought a concept together really, really tight. Now, our dimensions are just under 5 inches in total length closed. A handle thickness of uh, just over a half an inch and a closed height of a very rather thin 1.22 and an open overall length of 8 0.36 and uh, it weighs about 4.4 ounces or 125 grams all that stuff will be in the pause and read card of course and one other dimension that we have added is what I'm going to call grip length or grip area it kind of changes between the pause and read cards I think grip area is going to be the one that is a continuous thing in the pause and read cards but the first few of them I made it kind of swap back and forth so Either term will work, and what that measurement is, and it's the only grip measurement I'm going to put in there unless there's something really weird in a grip, so don't be asking for a whole bunch of other crazy stuff, but it is from the furthest point this way on the knife that you can safely use your hand minus finger choils, forward finger choils, to the rearmost point here, not here, not some point sticking out here. Well, I'll take that back. If it's got an angle to it, it will be the furthest point. But it's not. It's going to be the furthest point that your hand is going to touch in a normal grip. So that's what grip area or grip length is. And on this knife, it's 3.65 inches or 92.7 millimeters. So it's got pretty good length for grip. Now, moving on, let's get some knife comparison done. See if we can get our standards out here. I think they're laying around here somewhere. Yeah, there we have our Buck 110. And, you know, similar in size. Our Rat Model 1. And our Delica's hiding out up here. And there you go. There's our Delica. So, it is kind of your standard size 3.5 inch blade. Uh, full titanium frame lock in S35VN. Uh, where it differs is in the styling. And it does have a bit of an aquatic styling. Not quite as aquatic as like the Sea Monster from Wii. But we've got... That's not really a trailing point. 
Uh, see, uh, yeah, we'll do the blasphemous stuff here. I've got a wee box that we can lay that against. See, that blade edge is flat across the top. It's an illusion with the way they've done the swedge work and the grind that makes it look like a trailing point, which it really is not. And, uh, you know, very nicely done, though. And we're going to get back to that here in a minute. But for now, I would like to get a close look at this blade. And what we get here is a piece of beautifully stonewashed S35VN. And we're going to pause because everyone's going to go, Oh my God, another compound grind. First off, look at that sharpened edge. There's barely a bump on the upper side of that sharpened edge. To note that there is a little bit of change in grind there. The lower part of that uh, compound grind or that secondary bevel, excuse me, is nice and even. So what does that mean for you? That means it's going to sharpen like a drop point, like a regular old knife. Uh, what does that compound grind mean to you? Well, that compound grind really doesn't mean anything but a style point. And uh, I want to explain that before we you know, go nutty on this stuff. If you look at this knife, this grind is ran completely flat and parallel on either side of the blade down the knife. Don't let that swedge fool you. This is completely parallel. And then the compound end of the grind, what they've done to get the distal taper in the knife. And we'll explain distal taper in full here in just a minute. But to get distal taper in the knife, they have put what looks like a compound grind right here. I guess it doesn't look. It is a compound grind to give you a point. What does that do for you? Well, nothing really besides put a fancy uh, mark there on the knife blade where the, grind, where the grinds transition and looks kind of cool. Otherwise, there's nothing it's doing to the secondary bevel. There's uh, nothing. So why did they do that? Okay, we've looked at a lot of knives that do this, and I don't have a Wii 702 readily available here, but I brought some other knives, because the 702 would be a very good example. I may have to grab one. But uh, many of you guys have been interested in this one that I'm working on. Uh, haven't got much done with it in a while. Let's see if I can get some light on that. That's kind of hard. But this knife does exactly the same thing. It comes down to about here and turns in to get uh, your distal taper, or come to a point. However, whenever you look at this knife from the side, you don't see that. And that's the only difference. Whenever I went and ground this knife, I had it up on the grinder, and I went across the grinder like that. Gives a nice, smooth rollover. But if you feel the knife, that rollover is still there. What Best Tech chose to do here was instead of giving it that rollover, you've got full, flat, and parallel grind all the way up through here, and then they went back and brought it to a point with another flat grind right there. Not a huge deal, not uh, a compound grind, you know, in the, uh, oh... It's not a nightmare grind. It's none of that crazy stuff. And that's what I want you to see out of it. So don't be concerned with uh, that grind. You know, here's another shiver I've been working on. And uh, in fact, this one's pretty much finished. As you can see here, though, this one just has a distal taper that goes most of the way down the blade. And that's what you're going to see on a lot of knives. Uh, Spyderco does this to great effect. They start out with whatever thickness this is, probably 0.14, something like that, and they taper the blade all the way down to the tip. But most knife companies don't. Most knife companies uh, and most knives you're going to deal with have that fairly straight up through here and then they come down to a point. Best Tech just decided to accentuate that and make it appear like a compound grind. So enough of that. It is a flat back. It's not a drop point. Straight back design with uh, 
a good, fairly thin behind the edge. I mean, it's not super slicey, but it's it's going to be good enough. And uh, there again, that's another one of those interesting things, a 000 of 100. I'm still curious about that. Need to email Best Tech and ask them. Uh, and we've got our jimping up there. Just a very, very nice blade in my opinion. The only place they gave a bit of a goof is right here where they did not get this sharpening choil out to the end of the plunge grind. That's a miss, but it's not a horrible miss. And so many knife companies do it, I really can't pick on them too much for it. Let's get these uh, shameless shelf promotion knives out of the way. And move on to our pause and read card. And I'll be right back with you. So we got to look at the blade. Now let's talk about ergonomics with the Dolphin. Now, whenever I get this guy in a regular grip, he's not a problem. It works pretty darn good. Now, whenever I get it like this, not a problem. Even roll it around like this, I'm not having issues at all. You can get a good reverse grip on it. However, what I found was whenever I was really bearing down on things, my ring finger lands right here. That's a problem, and uh, I don't care for it. It's that thing that we've talked about many times. If you don't have these sharp little points perfectly placed, if you're going to put them on a knife, then mm, you're just shooting yourself in the foot because it's going to be a knife that people aren't going to want to use, and somebody like me and other people are going to complain about it. So is it awful? No. Under normal use... It's going to be fine. I'm not going to be upset about it. However, if I was having to use this in a hard use situation or I was taking this out in the woods with me, in fact, I wouldn't take it out in the woods with me because I might be doing some things where that is going to get in my way. So be aware of that and be aware that uh, this may be a knife that you want to put in your hands before you purchase it. And I know that's a tough thing to do, but you know, if you do decide you want one, order from someplace that has a good return policy. Uh, other than that, the thing is uh, great. Just that one little point, you know, and we've talked about that a hundred times. And uh, so let's move along to the pocket and see what we get there. And this is another place that we get to talk about the knife a little more than what we normally do. If you're wearing jeans, slacks, whatever, that little pocket clip is fine. In fact, it's beautiful. You've got your uh, lanyard hole sticking up just above the pocket. You don't have much of the knife sticking out, and it's just freaking awesome. However, I want you to look at this. That is in there tight. And uh, even though it has quite a bit of spring to it, and it does, it's sprung pretty well, this is not a clip that you want to stick in 5.11s. This is not a clip, clip that you want to stick in any sort of work pants that have a thicker canvas material. Uh... You know, if it's Dockers or something like that, you're fine. Slacks, fine. Regular Levi's or Wranglers or whatever brand of jean you wear, fine. But your heavier duty pants, this clip will not accommodate them. So, that is a problem for some people. And, guys, let's go over some final thoughts here. You know, we got a free spinning pivot. We've got... Uh, some of the best action. This action is just, oh my goodness. It's just, these guys, they, these guys, we and Riot, are doing some of the best machining out there in the knife world right now at reasonable cost to the consumer. And it is just amazing. Now, people argue they've got some weirdo designs and all that, but it's just beautiful. And uh, if it wasn't for this right here, I wouldn't have a problem with all recommending this knife to any and everyone. Because the blade grind, even with the what some people are going to call a compound grind, is not an issue. It's not a sharpening issue or shouldn't be a sharpening issue. And 
it's just a beautiful thing. The swedge work, the stone wash, everything is beautiful on this knife, and the action is unbelievable. And one other thing I do want to talk about are the screws real quick. You see those? And the screws the best tech are using. If you watch the recent videos on the new ones with uh, the new knives from Wii, look at what best tech's doing right from the start. And these are stainless screws. Nothing special, but they bought the good ones. And, well, I'm going to drop it here. The best tech dolphin, in my opinion, is a pretty darn wonderful knife. Uh, you do need to be aware of the ergon possible ergonomic issues and the pocket clip. If you can live with those two issues, this is going to make a superb everyday carry knife at, you know, it's that price point thing. <clears throat> you're not getting some of the stuff you get with a Wii knife. You're not getting some of the stuff you get with Ria. You're not getting some of the stuff you get with many other brands. But you're getting a damn good solid knife. At, a, at under $200. And uh, I can't argue with that, boys and girls. Anyhow, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me and getting a look at the Best Tech Dolphin. Uh, I'd say this one's a keeper, boys and girls. And you guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.